Okay, let's get more on this story now uh, from Beirut. Uh, we can bring in uh, Van Megedichin. I apologise uh, with my pronunciation. Lebanese policy analyst. Um, how would you... I mean, this releasing of drone footage... We don't know, it's not officially confirmed, but, but the claim is, coming from Hezbollah, that this shows uh, um, an Israeli base by the border. How significant is that? Well, um, this is not the first time that Hezbollah is sending drones to film sensitive sites in, in Israel. Uh, there's been multiple attempts of sending these types of drones. Basically, these are reconnaissance drones, and most of the time, they're not as dangerous as they look, as they seem to be. Uh, more dangerous drones are the ones that we do not know of, that uh, the, the drones that, for example, uh, hit Tel Aviv a few days ago, that the Yemen's Houthi group, um, Houthis uh, reclaimed responsibility for. For example, these drones by Hezbollah are an attempt so far uh, along the years that we've seen them, we've experienced them, that they're, they're an attempt to show the Israeli side that Hezbollah has the capacity, Hezbollah has the ability to infiltrate Israeli airspace just like is Israel infiltrates the Lebanese airspace. Basically, both of the parties on both sides of the border not respecting the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1701. So these drones are a reminder that the failures of these UN resolutions are, are dangerous for the region and making this region of uh, the Middle East basically a ticking time bomb. That's the kind of sense that's been there, I think, since, since going way back to October, that surrounding regions could get drawn into the conflict that we're seeing. Uh, we're not seeing it on a large scale yet, but how would you assess the tensions, the hostilities? Because there are these kind of intermittent acts of violence across the border uh, between Israel, Lebanon, and, and you know Hezbollah retaliate, Israel retaliates. Uh, how would you, where would you put the sort of fear factor at the moment, the level of danger? <laughs> well, uh, basically, uh, if you ask the Lebanese public, uh, most of them are living their day-to-day -day lives, hoping that a group, uh, an armed group, a militia doesn't take the whole country to destruction, to total destruction. On the Israeli side, there is also the same hope that the Israeli government doesn't escalate this situation with Hezbollah and turn the rest of the Israel into a war zone. Some parts of Israel are already targeted every day by missiles. And many Israelis think that if Israel goes to escalate the war with Hezbollah, the whole country will go up in flames. Hezbollah and Iran might target other Israeli major cities, and the war would escalate. Well, of course, on the Lebanese side of the border, the situation would be catastrophic, because today, despite the war, Lebanon's borders are still open. Despite the conflict in the south of the Litani River, south of the south, south of Sidon, south of the, the, the south of the town of south of Tyr, you have a war happening and airstrikes happening every day. But do not forget that the Lebanese airspace is still open. The Lebanese borders are open, so there are medications, there are uh, there are the, everything that the Lebanese people in the south need. They have it today. The hospitals are not out of medications, just like in Gaza. In Gaza, people are dying because there is no basic medication today because of the war with Israel. In Lebanon is still in a comfortable situation and engaging in this war. If it gets worse, you cannot imagine, imagine what the situation in Lebanon would be. Van, really appreciate your time. Some sort of kind of an eye-opening, uh, I think, revelations there, analysis from Van Megadichian, Lebanese policy analyst. Thank you.